Ladies and gentlemen, we are now moving on to our next keynote address by Mr. Anurag Mehrotra, CEO designate Mahindra Food Automotive Private Limited. He will be talking on mobile marketing from handset to mindset. Anurag Mehrotra is the Chief Executive Officer for Designate of Mahindra Ford Automotive Private Limited, a joint venture between Mahindra and Mahindra Limited and Ford Motor Company that will develop, market, and distribute Ford brand vehicles in India and high growth emerging markets around the world. So, ladies and gentlemen, before I invite uh, Mr. Mahrotra here, uh, he's already here, but let me remind all of you that while this session is on, if you have any questions, don't hesitate, put it right out onto the comments, and you can also tweet to us using our hashtag ScreenAge. So a very warm welcome to you, Mr. Anurag Mehrotra. Pleasure to have you here. Thank you, Kathy, uh, and good evening, everyone. I, I hope everyone's well and safe uh, uh, in these times. Uh, you want to just pull up the presentation, Kathy, if that's okay? All right, great. Um, I must start with a confession. Um, I'm no expert at mobile marketing, uh, but what I do know is that the uh, access to data is what makes mobile marketing possible and valuable. Um, Rahul and Kaushik, who are the marketing leads for us, keep reminding me that, Anurag, it's not so much the device, but the data that comes through is what makes it uh, so much more powerful. What I intend to share with you today is really a perspective on how the notion of data or mobile itself can and is changing. This change is presenting fantastic opportunities for business leaders like yourselves. However, like most opportunities, this too comes with its trilemma, uh, as Fareed Zakaria mentions in his latest book. We'll touch upon that in, in a few minutes. Uh, the chat today is really about broadening your frame to look beyond the handset and get to the core of what makes the handset so precious, which is really the data that flows from and to the device. Hence the title of handset to mindset. Uh, if you could go to the next slide. One of the reasons why the handset has become such a beacon for marketers is because of the data that it offers for you to segment, target, message to, and ultimately convert. But why stop at the handset or mobile phone alone? According to some estimates, there will be over 75 billion connected devices in the world in the next few years. Uh, with just 14 billion mobile handsets, we have so much we can and are doing as marketeers. Imagine what we could do if we had five times more data about our customers. So how should marketers be looking at deriving value from all this data that will soon be coming at you? Next slide. Of the many benefits you derive from data, I think there are three that uh, we personally look at uh, at Ford uh, to assess the value creation for a stakeholder. The first is convenience, the second is efficiency, and the third is personalization. If you go to the next slide, I'll, I'll start to talk about uh, convenience, which plays a big part in the adoption of products and services. Uh, if you could flip to the next slide, please. Yeah, uh, simplification is a big theme. Uh, I think Samir touched upon it um, earlier as well. It's a big theme for our consumers. So when you think about how to deliver value from the data you're getting from the connected devices, think about how might you use that data to help simplify people's lives. Uh, the next slide is really a fantastic ex uh, example, uh, which is uh, something I have experienced uh, personally. Uh, go to the next slide. Yeah. So one great example of convenience is, is Practo. Uh, going to a doctor's clinic, honestly, for is a big chore. You take an appointment, and when you reach the clinic, there is usually a queue, and the appointment will never start on time. It will always be delayed. The whole uh, experience is very frustrating, uh, and I can say this from personal experience. And in these COVID times, the risk of infection would always play on your mind. And here comes Practo, and it has simplified our doctor consultations. With the click of a button, you can consult the doctor sitting at home 24 by 7. You not only consult, you can even buy the medicines and have them home delivered. It's so convenient and so simple. If you go to the next slide, I'll give you another example, which is Amazon Go, right? Uh, many of you would have probably seen this. Uh, one of the biggest pain points for consumers is uh, when you walk into a store, you pick up your stuff, and then you have to stand in the queue to get the billing done. Amazon Go comes along, you just walk into the store, you pick up whatever you want, and you just leave the store. Uh, the amount just gets debited to your Amazon Pay. 
The same thing is coming to a 100-year-old industry, which is the automotive industry that I represent. If you flip to the next slide, um, and, and the place where it is starting is, and I'll give you three examples. Uh, in, the place where it's starting from is the vehicle servicing side. Taking your vehicle to a workshop that is about 30, 45, or 60 minutes away, wait for the vehicle to be serviced, or sometimes you do come back home. Then once the car is serviced, uh, the workshop team will call you and you will go back to collect your vehicle. It's extremely inefficient and inconvenient. At Ford, the team has started home service. Uh, over 10% of our repair orders today are serviced at homes or at offices of our customers. You simply book your service, the technician shows up at your doorstep, services the car, you pay through any payment mechanism and you're done. Far simpler, far more efficient, far more convenient. Another example uh, of convenience is the advent of connected vehicles. The power, of the car becomes like a mobile phone on wheels. It is always transmitting and receiving data. So if you want to update the software in your car, you don't have to come to the workshop. Just like, a, like, just like you tap your phone and your software is updated, the same is gonna be true for your car. Another very powerful example of combining the data sets that you get typically from your uh, different systems is uh, now because I, we've got your car data, we know uh, we, the, the, the phone is paired to the car uh, by accessing your, uh, let's say your Outlook calendar and combining it with the Google's map data, uh, your car can send a notification to your colleagues if you're running late for a meeting and by what time will you arrive at the meeting location. So no need for you to try and text while driving or worse, lie that you're just about five minutes away. If you flip the, to the next slide, which uh, is a personal favorite of mine, uh, another example that is very close to my heart is the emergency assistance feature. Because your phone is paired to the car, in case of an accident, when airbags deploy or the fuel line is cut off, the phone dials an emergency center and transmits your location details. A person calls you up and checks if you're all right, and if you're not, an ambulance is sent, which reaches you in less than 30 minutes. Think about how many lives this connected vehicle is going to, is helping save. Just like the mobile phone data is rich, fertile ground for you as marketers, what if you could also get data from the vehicle or other devices of your consumers? Think about how might you use all this data to make life more convenient, more simpler for your consumers. The next slide is really about the second pillar of uh, value creation, which is operational efficiency. So you, as marketer, you are also responsible for driving operational efficiency. Let's see some examples of how people have done that. If you flip to the next slide, it gives you an example of Amazon warehouses, right? Supply chain logistics are incredibly important. Every one of Amazon's orders is unique, meaning it manages millions of different products of various shapes, weights, and sizes. Amazon employees used to roam warehouse floors to scan for each product. Now they use Wi-Fi connected robots to identify products by reading QR codes using built-in cameras. The AI system assesses which products are to be prioritized for Amazon Prime orders, for example, and the robots do the rest. While this takes place, workers can focus on packaging an order or restocking shelves. It's robots and humans working side by side. Another example is Merck's one of the biggest companies in the shipping world, with operations delivering fresh produce in 343 ports across 121 countries, it also has a very huge complex and crucial supply chain to manage. It has installed real-time monitoring across its entire fleet. 300,000 refrigerated containers transmit vital stats such as temperature, location, power supply, where satellite. The information is sent to the cloud and analyzed by the central office as well as offering real-time information as issues develop, which you can then rectify. The collaboration has also led to increased safety for port staff as containers now require less manual inspection. Another great example is Thys uh, ThyssenKrupp, the largest elevator company. They've now got smart elevators, which allow for a central NOC uh, network operating center to look at all the issues that are going wrong with uh, elevators and predictively maintain those uh, elevators. Think about how efficient they are making their own operations. Again, to the automotive industry, if you flip a slide, uh, in the automotive industry, the connected car is allowing OEMs 
uh, can you go to the next slide? Yeah, so in the automotive industry, uh, at least at Ford, the connected car is allowing us to define the product features better. We now get data of which features you're using, using in the car and which you are not. The marketing team can now decide whether they want to potentially remove those features and deliver some other features that you may be asking for or deliver efficiency to the business. The connected car data is also used by the warranty team to understand how the different parts of are doing in the field and they do it much faster than typically it used to take three to six months to get that data back but now you're getting it in real time and we take proactive steps it is also allow it also allows for tracking of the vehicles which is a very manual effort in the in the past the next slide is really about your channel partners the connected car data is also being used by the dealerships they now know which vehicle has what issues so when they run the marketing campaigns or discount schemes they do it in a very targeted manner uh, for a targeted set of customers instead of mass communication. This targeted approach saves money because I don't need to give a discount to everyone. I only give it to people where it is relevant. Also, when you book an appointment, the service advisor will have all your vehicle's health report card even before you show up at the workshop. It will allow him to work more efficiently uh, and thereby enabling more number of cars to be serviced by the same individual. Again, a channel efficiency uh, perspective. So as a marketer or business leader, think about how might you use the data from all the connected devices from your prospects and customers to drive operational efficiency for your organization or your channel partners. The next slide, uh, which is really the holy grail uh, for all marketers is personalization. Uh, a marketer's dream of one is to one marketing at scale. If you go to the next slide, we, we at Ford have swung uh, from one pendulum to the other, uh, which is we were doing a lot of communication with no personalization uh, to actually getting to something which is highly customized and personalized communication. If you flip one more uh, uh, slide, you'll see some animation come up, right? So we've, we've gone through this entire spectrum. And what we've seen is if you were getting a, a CTR of X at no personalization, when we have gotten to personalization at a high degree, we are now getting 12 times the efficiency of uh, what we were getting with no personalization. So it's really, really important to start to think about how you personalize all your communication. The next slide, again, uh, my favorite connected vehicle data will also start helping us to offer customized insurance premiums. So if you go to the next slide, please. Yeah, so if Kyati drives the car really well and safely, her premium, and if I don't drive very well, there is no reason why both of us should be paying exactly the same premium. Uh, I should actually pay higher premium because I don't drive the car really well. So with all the connected car data that will come back, we will be able to work with insurance companies to give customized, personalized insurance premium to our customers. Uh, if you flip a slide, this is a, another great example, which is Bear Anatomy which offers personalized products, uh, uh, answer a few questions on their website or app, and you get your very own personalized product with your name on the product. Uh, so think about how might you marry different data sets. Uh, they could be primary. Primary data is basically the data between you and your customer, and secondary data, which is data that you can either source or buy from other uh, people in the ecosystem to create unique personalized solutions and experiences. For example, uh, through Kyati's connected vehicle data, which is primary data, which includes, say, her location, driving patterns, where she's been. Uh, when I merge it with secondary data of the holidays uh, in her city or hotels or uh, uh, Airbnb where she stayed, uh, I can help curate a particular travel experience for her. So primary data from the vehicle combined with secondary data can actually help you as a brand to create curated experiences for your customers. So do think about how might you use all this data, primary and secondary, coming at you from all the connected devices to create highly personalized experiences or solutions. The only word of caution uh, is please strike a balance uh, between uh, uh, here is what could be of use to you uh, and not we are watching you kind of a philosophy. If you go to the next slide, that's really at the start I spoke about this mm -hmm. dilemma of, uh, sorry, just go to the next slide. Yeah. Uh, one more. Yeah, so I spoke about the trilemma. Three things you have to keep at balance. 
think what all you are doing when you have the data from one connected device, you're doing a lot. Now there will be at least five or seven connected devices of your customers. You will have insane amount of data coming at you and it will come in near real time. Those are two legs of the stool, amount of data and the speed at which it will come. Those are the two legs of the stool. The third very important leg of the stool is privacy or ethics. All three legs have to be in balance for you to really earn the trust of your customers. Um, if you go to the next slide, sorry, just flip one, go back a slide, please, if you don't mind. Go back, yeah, thank you. Uh, we've heard about the, no, the next one. Yeah, please stay there. Uh, we've all heard about the Target Store customer case study where they sent promotional material of pregnancy-related product to a teenage girl whose parents were not aware that she was pregnant. So how you, with the empathy that you use, to be able to send your communication and personalization, please keep that in mind. And just a few second dimension of data is really about the security of it, right? Just a few weeks ago, we read about the massive data breach that took place in some companies. When these things happen, they actually erode trust. Uh, you are the voice of the customer in the company. Uh, you as a marketer have to champion this effort with it. There are three basic tenets to a good privacy policy. The first is transparency, choice, and value. Uh, transparency is really about the customer is made aware that data is being collected and how it will be used. Choice is really about customer has a choice to opt out of utilizing their data for a customized experience. And value is finally the real benefit to the customer in return for allowing access to their personal information. The next slide is really a set of questions that I will leave you to think about as you start to bring the third leg of the stool to life in your organization start and continue to have active dialogue within your company on privacy policy. It's really, really important. So in sum, uh, if data is the most valuable uh, asset of the mobile phone, then prepare yourself because the amount of data that will come at you will go through the roof. Almost five times more data will be coming at you. So prepare yourself to creatively use primary and secondary data effectively to drive convenience for your customers, efficiency for your organization and channel, and personalization to create the significant ROI for your business. And finally, be the champion of your customer's data privacy within your organization because you are the voice of the customer within the company. Thank you very much, Kathy, and everyone for listening. I can't hear you. You're on mute. Sorry on that. Thank you so much, Anurag. I think that was such sure. a detailed presentation and uh, I think some key points that as a common consumer, I think I wasn't aware of, and it kind of opened my eyes to how connectivity is making our lives easier. I have a couple of questions from our audience. Uh, with respect to time, you have seven minutes more with us. So I'm going to try and get one, two questions answered from okay. you. So there is a question which says with ad free content gaining popularity when it comes to mobile, how can you create customer connect? Sorry, can I missed your last few words can you say repeat the question please yeah it says with ad free content gaining popularity when it comes to mobile how can brands create customer connect oh there's so much uh, and for like i think my my pitch was entirely based on the fact that don't just limit yourself to using the mobile phone as a device there is multiple devices within the house of a consumer that are connected today so please yeah. look at how can you look at all the data that is coming back for you to create those personalized communication and experiences. And an experience is not equal to an ad. Uh, yeah. uh, honestly, as a marketer, uh, if you look at the brands that I personally uh, think are icons like Royal Enfield, 65% yeah. of their marketing money is not spent on advertising. So please do not think of uh, marketing or creating content which is equal to advertising. These things beyond it, experiences is what consumers are going to cherish. So find ways in which you understand consumers and create the experiences or curate experiences for them based on the data that you're getting back. Right. Absolutely. Another question here we have is uh, with rising use of m-commerce, there are also concerns about data safety, which you also touched upon. How can m-commerce be made a safer medium? 
Oh, there are multiple ways of doing it. I think uh, the questions that I shared at the end are, uh, are just a starting point. Uh, please go back, uh, check within your organization on how the data is being used and both areas. And I touched on two areas, two large areas. One is the uh, safety of the data itself. So the fact that people, limited people should have access and what data they should have access to, et cetera, et cetera. So frame up a policy around that and constantly revisit. And the second is that when the data is being used, please use it with a certain amount of empathy. While I'm an advocate for machine learning, AI, and all this stuff, but it is really important to also bear in mind that the other per the person receiving it is a human being, right? So you have to show empathy in your communication, like the target example I gave you. Uh, uh, make sure that there is oodles of empathy in the way that you use the data in your right. communication and engagement. Right. I totally agree. I mean, I think one simple example that could happen is uh, simply with the telemarketing calls or even communication through SMSs. The moment lockdown was over, it started bombarding like robotics coming to you with these different messages, but there was no empathy yeah. shown in the messages. I mean, today, just this afternoon, I got an SMS from a retail chain, a very large retail chain, and it was in Gujarati, and I don't know Gujarati. So right. it just tells you when you are blindly uh, communicating, uh, right. it is, it is going to be counterproductive, right? Absolutely. Um, you, you wasted your marketing dollars and you irritated the customer, which is not required. So therefore, if you look at the entire spectrum that I showed from no personalization right. to high level of personalization, please mm -hmm. do look at that spectrum, but then have a wrapper of data security and have a wrapper of empathy so that right. uh, you can then actually create impact for your business. Absolutely. With that, I would like to thank you, Anurag, for thank being you. here, spending this time with us and sharing these beautiful insights. I think it does make sense in this uncertain times to be more uh, secure and uh, you know get, show more empathy towards your consumers more than anything else. So thank you so very much. Thank you.